All right, we got the uh, Silicon Valley nine hole cut. It's gonna be at Santa Ventura. I played these holes a billion times. Well, not a billion, but I played them a lot. Lots and lots. So let's go check them out here. So I set up, if you go to YouTube, um, I set up a playlist at my channel for the silicone. I, I need to change it. I put silicone nine hole cup and it's silicone valley nine hole cup. And I put the back nine of one tournament that we played. I think it was the Ventura Open. Didn't do bad. Got an Albi. Picked up, picked up a couple of eagles. Not too bad. This hole right here, I did not pick up the eagle on. And there's a bunch of different ways to play this hole. And in that video, I played it where I just laid it up out into this area. And there is a killer short iron shot. So if you're using whatever's your most accurate best ball guide short iron, you're going to be a minimum club. And it, it's, it literally boils down to hitting it perfect. On my shot, I was doing, I did an extra mile and a turkey ball, a two power low wind ball. And then the second shot going in was with a Hornet. Now I'd be using my Kingfisher. My opponent, on the other hand, did an APOC four. They did a power five ball. They put on five top spin and one less than maximum right hand side spin. And they had a little teeny bit of overpower on it. Um, on my notes, it's they, as far as like the how much curl they put on it, let me show you my grid. Get the little test grid up. So, what they did on the curl was they did three and a quarter ticks. So, there's one, there's two, there's three and a quarter. The outside of the ball, the ball was sitting like this. The outside of the ball was at the three and a quarter tick mark as far as curl just a little bit of overpower and they were able to clear to, to bounce over to come in and they were on right off the green now i will say their trajectory where their trajectory put them it was more they were coming in like right here and so they had really kind of put this into play they had tons of room on the right hand side so on that particular shot i'd either add more curl and where that bounces over, where it comes from this bounce going over to the other side, you don't have to go as deep if you're on this trajectory. So if you can try and hit it down here where it's down in this area, your bounce to get over is not gonna be as far as if you're out in this area. So you should, it, it's possible. I'm gonna work to get on in one. There is a max overpower hook shot that we can do on this hole. And it brings you more over on this side, but I think what my opponent did with the power five ball, that that really is the way to go. And I'm gonna work all week long to try and get on in one. I don't mind this shot out here, but if you, and I'm not in a perfect zone, if you can hit perfect every single time, this shot right here is beautiful, beautiful. But if not, it's always easier to make a short chip or a putt to get you that eagle on that par four than it is to uh, hit it from distance. And I'm going for the green and one. Hole number two. All right. This hole, the last time we played this in a tournament, and it was in that during that Ventura week, I was playing with a teammate, with my teammate Kevin, and we were, and I played uh, Dale Appleby that week on this hole, and we started off. I hit like four or five hole and ones in a row on this, and then Dale got on a streak and hit like four or five, six hole and ones on it, and we were killing it. And then as the week went on, I got to the point where if I would have turned around, faced the opposite direction, and just thrown the ball over my shoulder, I probably could have got as close as what I was aiming for. <laughs> it's like it went all downhill as the week went on. Theoretically, this green from the tee box, it, I think, is uphill. So we should theoretically be taking some wind off. But, I'm, but the last time I played it, I was playing with a grizzly. And once again, I was playing with a turkey ball, a two-power low wind ball. I was counting it at one per ring at plus 10% and just going straight at it. And the deal is you can play this with any ball, but bringing out a low wind ball could really help you out. And this is, this is a very good hole for hole in one, especially if you've got a little bit better clubs where you've got some ball gun. 
Hole number three. I like our chances on that hole though. All right, I like our chances at Albie on this hole. So in one-on-one -on -one play, I bring out a rock, a QB. I played this hole with a, with a QB forever, a QB and a Marlin. And I'm not even trying to get around this corner. I'm just trying to lay up right there. And then you have a sniper straight to the cup. Now, one of the things that I've noticed on this hole is here's the cup. And there's kind of a little bit of a hill right here. So when you're, when you're bringing your ball guide to the hole, especially if you're hitting back here from distance, you can bring your ball guide to the cup. But if you move it to the right a little bit, it'll engage this hill. And what it'll do is it'll make your ball, the tip of your ball guide, start to dip down towards the hole. And I found that when I was trying to go straight at the cup, if I didn't have my speed absolutely perfect, that when it got into this portion right here, it would drift off to the right. And you'd always just miss on the, on the on, or excuse me, drift off to the left, and you'd always miss right here on this left-hand edge. But when I started bringing it up and actually engaging this drop and then setting my shot up, I found that I was sinking it more. And I, my speed may be a little off, but I was already using that. And so on this hole, I would try it, you know, check it out to see what I'm talking about. But when you, if you line your ball guide straight up to it without using any spin and then move it to the right a little, you'll see the, the tail of your ball guide will start to drift to the left. And that's the area that I'm looking for trying to set up to go to the hole if you're hitting from distance. Even if you're hitting from out here, I mean, that's the way to go. So you have several. Hello, Moto. Hold on. All right, where was I? I got, I got a new phone today. I dropped my phone and uh, it went poof. <laughs> and I got a new phone today. I was like, what is that sound? And that was my de the default ringtone on it. All right, where were we? So shot number one, one-on-one -on -one right there. Shot going into the cup. If you're trying to just work your way around the band, now it's a little bit easier than it used to be. This Anything outside of this line used to be out of bounds. And there used to be a row of trees over here. And it's still really easy to get caught up in the rough down in this area. If, you get, if you're up in the front up here, you can recover. But if you get caught up in the rough back here, you could be in a spot of bother. A lot of people will just try and work it around the corner and end up in this area as an optimal area, which is actually not too bad. It's a short iron in from there, possibly long iron, just depending on what ball you brought in club. And not too bad. You can bring out a power five ball here. What did I do? I did I did an extra mile and a berserker. So let's zoom in here. Here's the first cut of the rough. If I can get my pen to work. Here's the first cut. Here's the second. Here's the third. Here's the fourth. Here's the fairway, right? So transition between the first and the second cut of the rough. I was four rings in that direction. So my white ring was completely in the first cut and the rest of my rings were out into the second cut of the rough. I took the wind out. Took the wind out, max overpower hook. And where I came through on the video was I came through on this trajectory. Man, sorry about that. Came through and ended up, eh, I can get the, the whole hole a big hole I was on and I did it again damn Ricky see this is why I play Ricky coming in on this trajectory where you can get caught up on this shot is right here on this fairway so I had my bounce as such that even if if I was over on the right hand side trying to bounce over it or if you're clearing it so let's zoom in a little on that so if you're on the white line you're on this white line coming through here it's real narrow at the tip and it's I'm not saying it's impossible you can bounce over but what I find is that more than likely my this bounce is right in this zone so I'm not getting a bounce here I'm getting my bounce back here and then it's coming up to that spot and if you're on this trajectory it does put you where it tails off where it's putting this sand on this side so anything to the left is a problem 
from the video that was on, and if you watch the, the play set that I put up, I was four rings out, and I almost think I should have been like maybe four and just a little, because a little is a long ways. I, I did leave a little bit of room down in this area. I have been on in one. I've overshot this, but normally on this shot, if you're using an, an extra mile, seven or eight with top spin, you can find yourself in a good situation where you're up here in this zone. I have a few times clipped and rolled out and been in this zone, which is a, a pretty decent shot up here. Even from the rough up here, it's not a bad shot. But obviously trying to get on in one, if you've got an if you've got an apocalypse that's bigger than a five, um, there's a really good shot that you can you can get on with it because it's we're talking the same distance as an extra mile, a little bit more raw power, same kind of top spin. So we've got options on this. This is a very it doesn't matter where you end up down here, whether you're in your wood range, you're in your long iron range, you're in your short iron range, or if you're up here in wedge. No matter where you're at, you have a super legitimate shot at an Albi on this hole. This is a very Albi of all par 5. But like I said earlier in the video, here's the cup. There is a, a, a hill over here where it, where it drops down towards the cup, and I would try and follow that instead of going straight at it. All right, hole number 4. Now... <laughs> Okay, I'm going to give you, this is obviously whenever we're, you're watching these, but it's in my opinion, right? But this hole right here. So one-on-one, -on -one, I play the black line, and I do, typically I do about a plus 10%, and I find myself a lot on this hole with, in the past, Guardian, Sniper, um, it's definitely a wood shot from up here. Well, from the rookie tees, it might be a long iron shot because Santa Ventura was in Tour 7 forever, and I'm not sure if it still is, and I've played these holes a bunch from the pro tees, and from the pro tees, it's, you're definitely in your wood range, depending on the ball that you bring. So um, normally in one-on-one -on -one play, I'll end up on this with a marlin and definitely in wood. In tournament play, however... On this particular hole, I'm going to bring, I'm going to play it different. Let's talk about all the other shots and then I'll talk about how I'm going to play it. So this way over here will get you close. I don't think of this hole as being a big hole-in-one type hole when you're shooting from over here, but you you can get lucky and get a hole-in-one. You do have a good shot from, from the white line, but if you look at the way that the hole is from the tee box, it's down to that spot and then it comes up to the green. So you are like way in the hell downhill here. But if you're hitting to the green, you're, you're not too far off. So if you're hitting down in this hole, I would highly recommend, like if you're an eyeballer, like you like the eyeball shots, um, taking the white line here might not be, because even if you use the wind ring method, <laughs> This is one of those holes where if we're going to get headwind, we're going to have to make a bigger adjustment than if we're getting tailwind. And so it, you really have to know what your, your adjustment's going to be if you're taking the white line. And you really want to do something where you can accurately adjust by using the wind ring method as opposed to eyeballing it. This is a dangerous ass shot because you're down here at the bottom. You've got the sand trap that comes up coming up to the green and it is super easy to bounce from here and hit this and just end up in the sand now they may have changed this i think i'm not sure it's as steep as it was when this hole first came out but if you end up in the sand i've been in the sand before where you can't get out where you actually have to hit back <laughs> and get back out here on the fairway so that you could get back up to the green and so the sand is bad, bad. And so the white line is a great way to go at it. There is a, you can do a rough bump. I suppose there would be a rough bump on the other side, but I'm, you'd have to have a club with a lot of topspin because the rough is so steep right there because you're coming up out of the sand. And I mean, like literally it's, there's a, a it is super steep on that rough where you're hitting at it right here. It's not on a flat rough. It is on the curve. You can come at it from the left. 
and I've seen several people get hole in ones coming at it from the left. But I think if you're trying to come at it from the left or the right, I prefer the right way over the left. I don't think the left, for me personally in my game, I, I don't I don't like this shot, and I and I I'm, I won't do it. You have a much better look at it if you're coming from the right hand side. In tournament play, however, you can come at this with <clears throat> a Saturn. You could use a Grim Reaper if it has more backspin than the Saturn. And the last time we had this hole in a tournament, even though my Grim Reaper has 100% backspin and my Saturn's only got 92, I've played this hole so much with my Saturn that when I switched to the Grim Reaper, the setup was different. And you're super close to your red line. So like you're barely in the club. And if I was bringing more backspin trying to get up closer to the hole, I was actually getting closer to the red line, even with a three power ball. So to give myself a little bit of leeway, um, I'm just gonna continue to play it with the Saturn like I have for years. And I'm playing it with a Saturn and a Kingmaker. So let me pull up, hold on one second. Let me see if I can find it, hold on. All right, I did find it. So this is a shot of the hole. I'm using a Saturn and a Kingmaker. And you can see where I'm at. I'm right on the transition of the fairway, or excuse me, the, the fringe and the green. And distance-wise, going this way, let's zoom in on that a little. I'm right there in that upper corner on that darker square. And so from where the, the, the pin is at, I'm two of those up and two over. I have no side spin, just backspin, maximum backspin from that spot. Let's see if I was doing an adjustment. I don't know on there that I was actually doing on the shot that I took in the in the video, if you guys watch that playlist, I, I don't think I made any adjustment on it, but I think it's one of those things that we have to kind of work on it as the week goes and see how it's playing. Because the last time we played this, where you're coming down to the cup, let's see if I can get my damn pen to work. It's one of the only thing I don't like about this D recorder is if you have the D those pages up, you can't uh, use their little tools. I can't draw on the screen, damn it. There's a ridge right coming down here. And if you got on the right hand side of it, the ball would actually fall off to the right. And if you're on the left-hand side of it, it would it rolls down to the cup, and there's a pocket right here. I like this hole. I've I've doing this backspin shot on this hole. I mean, I've hit hole in ones on it just because I played these holes a lot in one on one. But in tournaments when they first came out, trying to go at it from the right-hand side, I I don't know that I've ever hit a hole in one. But I have hit a lot of hole in ones taking that shot just just playing. But using this shot right here, if you can get the wind adjustment right, this is definitely gives you a serious opportunity for hole in one. Very serious. And if you've never taken this shot where you've done the backspin and your Grim Reaper has more backspin than your Saturn, you can try it because the deal is, is that you could lower down the backspin on the Grim Reaper and just put it at 92 so you're taking it whichever club is going to be most accurate for you, but you've got some options if you're setting it up for the first time, but there's a great shot on this hole. If you go right at it, go right at it. Stay away from the light. All right, let me turn my grid off. Hole number five. Now hole number five, if you're playing a pro and you get on this hole, this, I, I like this hole because a lot of people failed on this hole and it's super easy. So if you're playing from the pro tees or you're playing from the rookie tees, your actual end spot out here, if I can get my damn pen to work, your actual end spot out here is pretty much the same. You're looking somewhere in that zone. Maybe I've seen a few people get a little bit up here, but it's really difficult on trajectory. and. It, and from out here, it's not, most people are going to end up out in this area. It's hard to get around that corner over there. Some people are going to end up in the rough on the other side, which is really, really bad. There And there's no sense for it. It doesn't do you any good to be far. This is one of those holes where if we draw a line from 
just this area right here. We're at the T box. We draw a line to that area. We're going through those trees from right there. So if you're on this side of it, you may have a shot coming to the cup where the trees aren't involved. You don't have to put any side spin or you don't have to move it off to the left and then put on any curl. You don't have to deal with those trees at all. But if you hit it past that center part, every foot farther you hit it forward is just these trees are going to be more and more in your way. So the only way that you're going to have a shot at it is just a blind shot. So if you've played this hole a ton of times, especially if you're playing, playing it from the pro tees, if you've played this hole a ton of times and you've got a guardian and a marlin, even if you had a sniper and a marlin, if it was an upper developed sniper, um, you'll come off over to this edge right here or this transitional surface. And you want to be two to three rings out away from that transitional surface. Put on, if you're using a Guardian, it's about two and a half to three tops. And you can get away with two and a half because most of its life it only has two and a half. When it gets to maxed out, I think it only has three and a half. So two and a half top spin, max overpower, max curl, and it'll put you pin high. And this is one of the, this is an old green. So the green is super treacherous. There's a shelf right here. And if you end up on top, if you're over here where it's dropping, where here's the shelf and then it starts to drop to go down, if you're in this zone, you got a shot. But if you're up here at the top, you have a max overpower putt that you can't reach. But you can be way the hell back here on the back and overdrive this. And it is a, this green is long, so it's, it's very, very hard to actually end up in the rough, where you're in the rough out here. I mean, typically you'll be in the fairway, um, so it, it's it's really easy to just get up there. But you cannot be at the top. You've got to be down on the bottom. In tournament play, where we're bringing a little bit bigger stuff, we're not playing. And if you're playing from the Ricky Tees, once again, this shot down here is going to be the same. So if you're bringing low-level stuff and you're playing from the Ricky Tees, the second shot is the same as it is from the Pro Tees. But in tournament play, if we're bringing out a three power ball, we can actually get our sniper up here if we can get the depth in here. And I believe the depth was, and you're really not pushing it, it's like 390, 290. It's, it's, it's not really pressing your luck down here. You can get to the point where you can engage your top spin on your sniper and you can actually walk it down to the cup. It does hit in the video, I left it, I left it probably four or five squares short. It was at the bottom of the where it, where it comes from the shelf and it drops down and then it comes over and here's the cup. I left it a little bit short thinking that it was going to roll down and it did go about half the distance, but it was definitely short of the cup. It was on track. So you, I, I'm going to leave it a little short of the cup and see and kind of work that as the week goes on. But you do have a shot from here with a three power ball and a sniper if you've got really good ball guide where you can walk it up there. If you've got lower developed stuff, if I had, the deal is, is if I didn't have access to any bigger balls, I would literally play this with a Guardian and a Marlin because I've taken this shot right here a billion times. And it doesn't matter whether these trees are in there. What's hard about the trees, and here's where I see a lot of people scrub. This is why I, want, I like to get this hole in one on one because people will hit it out here. And then their shot to the cup is going like this. So these trees are way in the way. So when they put their ball guide out and they're trying to get to this spot over here, their ball guide's wonky. So they pull over here to make it so that they can see their ball guide. And then they shorten the shot up and they just make everything worse for themselves because they don't know. All you have to do is stretch your ball guide out to max club be three rings off that transitional surface, adjust for wind. If you're in a headwind, you just have to deal with it. Max overpower, three, two and a half, three top spin, max overpower, max curl, and it'll go right in that direction and end up on the green. <laughs> they don't know that. So when they go to set the shot up, these trees are hampering their shot. So if you understand how the shot is going on the second shot, you're good to go. It doesn't matter whether the trees are there or not. Those trees don't bother me at all because I'm going to put curl. Curl's not represented in your ball guide. So the ball guide's going, hey, dude, you're going to hit those trees. And you're like, no, I'm going to go around those trees because I'm going to add on curl. And the ball guide's like, oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> That's how that works. 
I like this hole. Your chances of, I think if you're going at it with a sniper and we can get the, the speed right, we do have a shot at hole in one here, especially if we can make our first shot consistent and we're in consistently in a good area where we do have a straight shot where we don't have to contend with the tree. So you're going to leave your shot a little bit more in this area than trying to get out here and put those trees into play. We got a shot at Alvi here. This is an Alvi of a hole. All right. Now we do have numerous ways and there is a fourth way. Let's talk about the fourth way first. Let's talk about the black line first. So if you head out into this area, this shot coming here, this green goes like this. Here's, here's the flagpole. And the green is dropping this way, seriously. And this is high and this is low. So here's the top of the green, here's the bottom of the green, and everything's going in this direction. And it's like a, it is brutal. This is the high and it's everything's going in these weird directions. So when you're over here hitting, here's the flagpole, and you're over here, this isn't that long of a shot, but you're engaging this hill, and the deal is, is that you're not just dealing with wind. You're dealing with the slope on the green. So your ball hits, and it bounces, and it does its thing, and it's tailing off, and it's got enough speed that it's going to be able to drop in the cup, and the slower it's going so that it can drop in the cup, the more the slope is pulling it, and it's super easy to miss here. And if you've played this whole lot, you, you can adjust for it, but if you're aware of it. So I know a lot of people, Dale Appleby, my buddy Dale Appleby, he is super successful on this black line, but he hits perfect damn near every time. But even hitting perfect here is no guarantee that you will make it if you do not adjust for the slope. And I find that hitting from the bottom going up here, that slope is brutal. It can be. The other way that you can do it, the one that's not shown on here, is actually hitting it through the trees. Now, if you've got a, if you bring out a big topper and a big ball, you'll be able to actually get your ball guide to go through the trees and, and you can try and pound it through there. You can use an extra mile. I used an extra mile seven, six, when this hole first came out, I probably had a level five and I, I actually, the only way that I went at this hole was through the trees because I almost always ended up on the back side of the tree so that I was going to the green and if I hit it perfect, it went in the cup. If I didn't hit it perfect, it didn't go in the cup but I made my putt and I moved on. I very seldom ever got caught up where I hit the tree and then I ended up on this side and I didn't have a shot. It happened, but in a, in a hundred times, it might only happen four or five times, four or five percent of the time where I actually got on the wrong side of the trees. And even there, I could still get up and recover. And so I just hit into the trees and that's a super viable way to do it. And if you've got some upper developed stuff, a bigger APOC, a bigger extra mile, a big topper and big balls, um, you can work to get through where you're over down here and you've got that chip to get in. Now, once again, you're on the low side hitting up. So when you're hitting up your ball guide, you're down here. Your ball guide's literally going to be doing this in order to get to the cup, even though you're just that far away. <laughs> you're going to have to chase the ball guide to get there. And wind may not be a factor here, but you have to allow for the slope. I'm going to do the white line and let's talk about, let me zoom in a little. So on this one, let me look at my notes here. I've got an extra mile, a kingmaker, and I may adjust that ball if we're in the wrong wind. So I'm going to have to look to see where the red lines are at. And if we've got a big headwind or something, I may have to adjust that to a power four ball just to be able to work the wind out. But I'll work that as we get into the practice round. I'm going to do a three and a half backspin, maximum right hand side spin. So in the white line, it puts you, if here's the transition between the fairway and the rough for this landing pad, I'm about two rings into it on this side. And it's, and it's actually back just a little bit. You're, what you're doing is with the three and a half backspin, your second bounce is going to be right there on that fairway and where I want my second bounce to be and I was and it cost me the la in the tournament that I videoed the Ventura Open 
it cost me a few times that week because I was a little tentative because I really wanted to make sure I wasn't playing, I wasn't hitting a lot of perfect on the other holes and I really wanted to make sure I just got my eagle here and moved on. And I was leaving my second bounce because you're not going to get a lot of ball guy with your extra mile and an extra mile works fine for this. I was putting my second bounce where it was right in the right in that rough area in front of the sand. And when I put on max curl, so the ball guide's going like this, all right? And here's the transition between the sand and the rough. And so as I put on curl, the ball's gonna be coming in and it's gonna be doing this trajectory. And over here, that rough is five, six, seven yards, not as far. So as I curve it around, my second bounce was actually on the fringe and not in that rough. And what was happening was I was actually right on the verge of where it was between the, it was hitting the fringe or sometimes it was clipping the, the green and then it would roll off to the other side. And I was fine from the other side and I could, I had a shot coming up, but I was having to contend with the hill that's over here that I'm trying to avoid. I would rather hit it downhill to this than uphill. What I really want is to just end up on the, on the green right by the cup on the first shot. So where I've had the most success on this shot is where I'm the two rings off down here, back just a little to set the shot up, three and a half backspin. And I want my second bounce to be right at the transition between the sand and the rough. That way when I do my arc and this arcs over, it's actually hitting in the rough and then bleeding forward. And I want it to hit towards the front of the rough, close to the fairway, so that it'll bounce out. And the way that this works is when it bounces out of that, it hits, if it can bounce out from here and get to this hill, once it gets to the hill, it's rolling towards the cup. There ain't no stopping it. But you can get caught up up here at the top. So there's a super fine line here when you're looking at your second bounce. And where I see a lot of people get this shot wrong is, they're not really catching how the curl is going to work as far as on their on their angle. So we're on an arc. So if this is where it's here and I put curl on it, they're thinking it's just a straight line deal. And it's not a straight line. It, everything's working in, in arcs here, right? So it's going to where it's going to put us here. We have to be thinking of where it's going to put us here. And start off right in that transition. I'm gonna. You got to be brave to do that because you're like setting your shot up, and you got to make sure that you've you've extrapolated where this is gonna go. But I would start off right at that transition and then work from there. In headwind, because we have variable wind here and we can't really work on the wind every day for the whole tournament. If we've got headwind here, I'm sure we're gonna have to add on some. And my notes, I don't, I don't have, I don't say anything about adding on wind, but. I think if we've got a strong headwind here, we may have to add on a little bit so that we don't clip that rough and end up caught up or it'll clip that rough and then bounce back into the sand. All right. I like, uh, we have got to get, there are too many people in this tournament at the top of the bracket that are gonna get an eagle on this hole every single time. So we have to get an eagle on this hole if we wanna keep up with the Joneses. Because that means these other holes, you know, we're trying to pick up a shot to get ahead of those guys. But we have to keep up with people on this particular hole by getting this eagle. There's a couple other holes here. The part, hole number three, you know, that's a great look at Albie. And there's going to be a lot of people that will pick up an Albie on that. It's going to be a pretty big Albie week. But this is a hole we have to get. Hole number seven. All right. I don't know who put the white line on there, but I will tell you right now, if you put the white line on there and you were and we were actually out really playing golf and I played the black line, you played the white line. It is bad, bad <laughs> because you're going to be in big trouble if you could actually get lucky enough. On your first shot, or I should say unlucky enough, on your first shot getting up here, because they're showing a backboard here, but I don't, I, there is a backboard here, but that's being generous. It, it's a backboard that's almost, it doesn't funnel you right. The funnel's way out here, and we need the funnel to be right up here by the green. 
if you get unlucky enough to actually get on the green, okay, here's the green, and then there's a shelf, and here's the flagpole, and you're down here. You cannot get your ball up that. You may be able to hit it over here and get it in the rough and then, and then chip it up. Or you may be able to get it over here. But if you can't get to it, get the hell off the green. Like, because it's not going to get any better. What will happen is, is you'll hit it up this hill and it'll get about three quarters of the way up and then it'll just roll back down. <laughs> and it's one of those types of holes. So I, the white line is done. Like, I, if you, you go ahead. You, you try it out. You go over there and try it out and then you'll see exactly what I meant. And anybody who's ever played the black line, the best thing that can happen to you if you're going too fast is that you roll off like this. You literally are going so fast that you, you miss the break and you end up in the, in the fringe. Okay, that's, I see that happen and it's happened to me before where I actually hit it too hard and, and hit it through the break. But if you hit it through here and catch the break, it'll funnel you right down here to the bottom. And anybody who's played this hole any amount of time knows exactly what I'm talking about. Once you get down here to the bottom, you're toast. <laughs> now, this is just an observation. But in my, in my observations of playing this game over the years, that anytime we're dealing with sand, water, a little island, tight transitions that in this area down here, wind plays, especially headwind, plays a big factor. So in one-on-one, -on -one, this may sound crazy, in one-on-one, -on -one, if I have any kind of dew headwind, I do a 40%. If I have any wind that's moving off in like this direction, I'm gonna do a 25 to 30, just depending on how big the wind is. And then anything that's along the line, we're definitely at like the 20. And then for me, and it's probably, I should probably carry this 20 all the way over and do the 20 all the way around. Sometimes just depending on the wind, I'll do a 10 if I'm, if I'm getting like due tailwind, but I should probably be doing the 20. But the wind, I have found personally, like playing these holes, that when you're dealing with this type of situation in a golf clash hole, with the sand and the water and the tight little transitions between one cut to the next in these areas that wind from different directions, you have, you have to make adjustments for it. Because if you're getting a big headwind here, you see it all the time. People will come out into this area, they'll set their shot up exactly like they always do. It takes very little, very little adjustment. I've got four backspin. I was using a Grizzly and a Navigator, four backspin, one left-hand side spin, plus 20%, plus 40 in headwind, plus 25 to 30 on the side. So I was doing a 20 even down here, plus 20. That if you're dealing with a headwind and you do this plus 20, there's a good chance that your second bounce is going to clip that rough and you're going to get caught up. And if you don't make this adjustment when you're doing and you've got tailwind, it's very easy to come up here and clip forward. These shadows, I like to, to set myself up so that I'm dead center in the middle of those shadows. And I'm dead center in the middle of that fairway. So however many rings, instead of setting the shot up over here and then trying to do a little bit, I, I want to be dead center in the middle of that. Four backspin, one left-hand side spin, plus 20%. I've had a lot of success on this hole, but this is another one of those holes that's scary as hell. Because if you get that adjustment wrong and you roll, because the cup is right here and here's that ridge. So if you've got any speed whatsoever going past the cup, unless you're going off in this trajectory really fast so that you can end up in the, you're going, you're going to end up slowly dribbling over. And then once it catches that, it's, it's gone. <laughs> I like our chances on this hole. We do have a shot, but this hole right here can eat your lunch. Now, every single time we play this hole in a tournament, in one-on-one -on -one play, I always play the blue line. And my goal is to get to right here, right in between this shadow and this shadow, right there. So when I'm hitting to the cup, and, and I will tell you, I have, to, I have to remember, because playing this from pro and playing it in rookie, I have to remember how to, I have different shot setups. So I like to do this as an absolutely total stock 
shot set up with a marlin and a rock I'm four rings off of this transitional surface so like my I'm looking out into this area right here and I'm putting on max curl no overpower and what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to set it up so it's a max curl shot I'm not trying to do like half curl because our zone down here is so narrow I want to standardize the shot I'm not at my red line so I've got plenty of room for maneuver down here so I can take the wind out from any direction and just do a stock setup with only maybe two, two and a half, maybe max three topspin and just lay myself up right here. And you have tons of options on how you're gonna to come to the cup. So if, you, if you're out in this zone right here, dead center between these two, here's a tree and here's a tree. So you have a straight lane right to the cup. And if you have a guardian, this is wood range. If you've got a marlin, so I'm not sure if you've got a three power ball. I think you're probably, you may still be in your wood. But I don't think you're at max wood if, if you're, I'm, I'm not sure. But you're taking this with a guardian and you can try and go right out the cup. You could try and do a dunk because we do have a killer backboard on this. You could try and do a dunk. You've got some options on how you're going to go at it. If you, if you didn't bring, so if you've got a lower level ball, you may have to start off over here and bring it around, which is problematic because now your trajectory is going like this. And if you're doing that, you're going to need to put on curl and there's a tree right here. So if you're bringing a guardian, it's hard to do the shot on the left, you're pretty much going to do the shot going straight at it. If you bring a sniper, you got a little bit more curl. So what you can do if you're in this zone right here is you can go straight at it, depending on the level of your guardian, or you can come out here and don't worry about this tree because you want to set your shot up so that you're doing, and if in this area out here, if I was coming at it, and let's, let's get rid of some of those marks. <laughs> Depending on the ball that you have, you're in this zone and you're coming out to somewhere out in here trying to bring it around. You're probably going to do maybe one, maybe two backspin, maximum side spin, maximum curl, probably three backspin. And what you're trying to do is the backspin doesn't engage until the first time it touches the ground. And the first time it touches the ground, it starts spinning off to the right. And, and you have that side spin on there. And so the ball literally takes a a hop and with the backspin it pulls it back while it's going to the right and so you'll you'll end up with a second bounce that's in this area and then you can dribble out onto the green i have hit very few eagles coming over here to the right but i will tell you that with low level stuff i very seldom ever get anything but eagle on this or excuse me birdie on this hitting out to here with low level stuff in tournaments, however, I almost always hit to the white line. And when you're hitting over here, you can get in trouble. Now, it's harder to get in. Once you set the shot up for the drive, and I was using a QB. I used a QB and a, and a Kingmaker for years and just tried to end up right here, right at the top of that hill. It's easy to get off here because if you... If you're setting this shot up, and this is why I like to use a QB on it. If you use a QB, you gotta use power three ball. If you use an extra mile, you can get away with it. But an extra mile down in here, here's one ring and here's two rings. I mean, you got very little room. You're like a ring and a half. So, I mean, if you hit it great to the left or the right on trajectory wise, you may clip it here and be fine. But where you're gonna end up out here is you're gonna end up in trouble. So with a rock, you're way into it. So if you hit a great to the left or the right, you may end up over here or here. But if you hit a two ring, you're screwed. Trying to get as far out to the tip as you can. And when you get out to the tip, the tip runs up to a hill. You're coming up like this, and then there's a little bit of a flatter, and then it drops off really quick. So if you peak up here and you still have any speed, it's gone. You want it to be losing speed and just dribble right to that spot. There is a spot up here that's like, oh, that's beautiful. But it is so scary because you are right there. I mean, any more speed and you could be in big, big trouble. The second shot, and it's more important to be in the fairway here than it is to get that extra little distance. So you have some options. 
you can do a rough bump. There is a rough bump that you can do here. You can bounce it over from here and come over. You can bring a backspin club and start off and try and go at it to do a dunk. Now, in the last tournament, I tried to do that dunk, and I was and, and I was having a problem with my red lines. So I was changing up balls to see if I could get, like, where I ended up down here, you damn near had to get every single inch every single time in order to have the right distance. And I was still ending up just a little teeny bit short, even with a bigger ball. So you'll have to work on that second shot from here. But I will tell you that this hole right here of the holes that we're playing this week will be the least eagled par four out there by far. I mean, like hands down, the other ones are going, the people are going to get eagles on the other ones a l way more often than they get them on here. People are going to get eagles on this hole, but it's going to be the exception rather than the rule. But this hole right here is probably going to eat more people's lunch. Like if you go through your bracket at the end of the week and look at how many people failed on this hole to just get the birdie. This hole right here is going to have cost more people the tournament than probably any other hole. Because it's super easy when you're coming from this direction to get your wind adjustment wrong so that if you're bouncing over from here going over, your second bounce clips that rough and you end up getting stuck in the rough. Or if you're doing the rough bump, you end up getting sucked into the sand because this is, once again, another one of those holes like I was talking about a minute ago. We've got water. We have sand. We have tight little transitions. <laughs> and we're playing golf clash. And anybody who's played golf clash for a long time knows that when you're in these types of areas, you have really got to have your numbers right because it is super easy to get off and end up in trouble on this hole. And I would doubt that there's anybody who's played this hole for any length of time, played Santa Ventura that hasn't experienced, you come into this hole with the best of intentions and you think, wow, I get over here and I got this great shot to pick up my eagle and you end up with a par. There is a way you can do a max overpower hook shot on this to come from this direction to get over to the other side. And you can also do this if you've got, with the extra mile, nine and the extra top spin that it has it's still you'd, you'd want a ball with lots of side spin and if you've got an apoc probably four or higher and obviously the higher the better you can come out here and try and just do just curl it around where you're getting a bounce over here and then you're bouncing over to the other side what i found is there's a lot of times where i made the shot my, f my first bounce was exactly where I went it. My second bounce came a little short and ended up clipping the rough, but I bled back out into the fairway. And from over there, you've got a pretty good shot at it. And you've got a little bit more options because you're not as far away, so the ball's not coming in as fast. So if you're starting off on the green side, you do have some other options. And there's a max overpower hook shot that you can try and set up that will get you out towards the end. When I was doing the max overpower hook shot here, I found myself out into this area more often still trying to work it out so that I didn't end up in that area but like when I failed it was somewhere on the rough on this side we got to remember that there's water here and this water is brutal and I've been I've been in that water a lot this is one of those holes where it would definitely be worth having the rights to be able to go get all the balls out of the water because you could make a lot of money on this hole <laughs> I, I, every single time we play this tournament, I think to myself, okay, I'm going to do the white line and I'm really going to go for it. And I'm going to do the thing. And every single week I have one time on this hole where it either eats my lunch or I had to scramble and it scared the hell out of me. And every single time it comes back in a tournament, I think I'm just going to play the blue line. I'm just going to get up there and get my birdie. And I'm not going to be one of that group because the group that's going to fail is going to be much higher. I mean, like, it could be 20% of the people that play this whole fail it per round. It's going to be a pretty good number. And I would really like my opponents, I, will, I want to give them the opportunity to fail here. And I just want to go out and get my birdie and move along. And you still have, especially if you get out here and you bring the right stuff. So if you're playing it in tournament and you get out into this area out here, and you bring a bigger ball, 
you bring out a club that's got good ball guide, you could get, especially if you're way out towards the end where you're past this particular tree. So one-on-one -on -one I'm trying to get here because I want to give myself options depending on what club, and I'm using a low-level ball, I'm just using a marlin. But in tournament time, if we're even with this shadow, we're even with this shadow in front of it, clearing this tree is a little bit easier so that we could set our shot up and, and if we had enough side spin we might actually be able to line the shot up without using any curl so we do have some options i think this time i'm just going to play the blue line i'm going to work my drive up shot up so that i'm in a consistent spot so it's just a pure setup shot i take out the wind hit perfect roll and if i hit great to the left or the right it'll still end up in the fairway and just take the blue line to it. Just, I'm going to give myself a good shot on the blue line, but I'm going to make sure that I don't get anything less than a birdie. That is a whole, talking about dropping shots off minimum score. This is another hole. This is a tough par five. And I've gotten a couple albies on this, but you have got to get super aggressive on the green side if you're going for an albie. Because this is ramped up like this, and this little bowl coming out here, and then it drops down. And where it where you're hitting out here in order to get up to the cup, anything to the left, or if you if you get the wind adjustment wrong and it goes to the left, you're involving all of this movement on the course, and it is very easy to end up in that sand. Very easy. Now, the way that I set this shot up is you can take a QB. You can take you can take a bigger ball only for the second shot because you're not going to get your lunch eight on the first shot, but it's the second shot if you don't have a big ball. So if you don't bring a big ball on the second shot, you need to bring a big club. So you're going to need to bring a big dog or you're going to need to bring a cataclysm, but you can play this with a marlin. But your second shot you need a monster club <laughs> and if we got headwind it'll be problematic so this is a big ass par five so i would bring out big stuff but if you're just going to lay it up to this zone not a big deal what i normally do on this is i take my qb and i do not care about these trees i do not care one iota about those trees if you put on, you'll have to work the top spin based off of your club, but you can start off with max and then see at where it bleeds out out here. And if you're too far, then, you know, take some off. If you're not far enough, then you may want to put on just a titch of overpower or just work with that spot. I like to be three rings off this transitional surface and I'm underneath the tree. So my ball guide's going from this area right here and it's going like this. And so I'm setting my ball up here, and so I can't see my ball guide at all, and I don't care about my ball guide. I'm going to be three rings off of the, the transition between the rough and the fairway. Max top spin. Maximum left-hand side spin. And when I set the shot up, I'm going to do max curl, no overpower. It's going to go around the trees and hit that spot, and it's going to bleed off in this direction, trying to get as close as I can to the tip. I have very seldom... I think maybe the first couple times playing the hole um, until we could work the shot out, until I could work the shot out, I ended up in the sand. But I very seldom ever have problems like this stuff down here. Like getting out to this area is not the problem if you're just taking the standard shot. You can overshoot it. And you can undershoot it, which will hurt your second shot, but you still got a second shot. If you overshoot it, you're, you're smoked. You're going to have to lay it up up here and then scramble to get on. If you bring out a big enough ball, okay, here's the line to the cup. If you bring out a big enough ball, you can get in a big enough club. So you've got an extra mile APOC. APOC works really good here because it has lots of curl. You can, you can start off on the other side of these trees. And from this point, you can do, and an APOC works, with an extra mile, what will typically happen is, is you'll find yourself in this area in the rough, and it's super easy if you've got a Nirvana to recover from there. This is actually not too bad a shot with your Nirvana. you got a really good look at it. 
but trying to get out into this zone, you really want, a lot of times you may clip this rough or you end up in that rough, but if you can actually get through it, you may clip the rough and then bleed forward and you have almost this white line shot. It's pretty tough to do it from that angle because these trees are in your way, so you can't really kind of go at it. You're, you're coming at it around that tree and you're involving this movement that's on the course up there. So you can get pretty aggressive with it, but it it's a pretty difficult shot. The second shot here from no matter where you end up has wrists involved with it. Same thing from down here. You know, if you're hitting this shot here, you're going to be coming at it like this. Well, you want to go like that, but you want to not involve this. So really what you want it to do is you want it to come in and just kind of end up on this side and kind of take that out of play. I find myself over here more, depending on where you're at here and depending on what ball and club you brought, you may be able to get a little bit more aggressive with it. But typically I don't like messing around with this whole shit show right here. I want to just get on the green, get my eagle and move along. Because there are going to be a lot of people that epic fail on this hole. And this is another hole that is super tough to alvey. Or pick up a shot on. If you get the right way on this, on this shot where you're trying to hit it over the trees. You're getting a bounce out here. And you can bridge the gap and you can get it to run forward. If you're out into this zone right here. There is a gap right here in front of the sand trap. There is a gap between this tree and this tree. And you can go straight at the cup. And when you're looking at the cup and you get up into this zone, here's the sand, and then it drops way down, and then the pin's kind of on a flat area. And so it's not going to be one of those things where you can run it up and there's no rough bump here, but what you can do is you can bring a big backspin club. So you're in long range here, and you can bring a Grim Reaper. A Saturn doesn't have enough to try and do a backspin on it and what you can and the deal is is what you're trying to do is dunk it <laughs> i went through all that and it's like no, you're telling me we're gonna dunk it so if you're in this area right here you're in between this tree and this tree you've got this perfect shot going in right here at the crotch of that that movement so it's it's really dropping down around the cup but the cup is on the flat down here and you can go for a dunk on it but you can't do it with a Saturn because if you miss the dunk, by the time it gets done bouncing back here and it starts to come suck back towards the cup, it'll clip the rough and you'll get caught up in the rough or, and, or you'll end up getting it in the sand. But if you have a Grim Reaper and you miss the shot here and you don't make the dunk, it has a hundred backspin and that extra eight backspin, especially when you get to the hundred mark, will if you miss it long it'll still stay on the green it'll it'll end up in the fringe and, or it may suck it back onto the green but you can recover from that and it won't end up in the rough but you can only get it done with a hundred backspin club you can obviously get it done with a sat with a saturn if you make the dunk <laughs> or if you're really short of the hole like you could be in front of it trying to pull it back but it doesn't have enough backspin and you're hitting it on a downhill so you're hitting it on the downhill and then it's coming down to where the cup is so when you're hitting in here, it doesn't have enough backspin to, to be able to, to bounce it up here and then bring it back to the cup. I don't even think the Grim Reaper does with the 100%. I, there, I just don't think there's enough. For, you can get up there and, and, and put it on the green, but you don't really have a shot. At it. It's sucking it all the way back to the cup. The only shot that you have of going right at the cup is with a dunk. And, and as crazy as that might sound, this shot out here, you'll be... If, especially if you're new to the game, there are a ton of people. This is the shot that we're working that hard to get out here so that we can go for the dunk because that's our best shot at getting an Albi. And then it all boils down to hit it perfect. Every single one of these shots has wrists involved with it. I saw Tommy when this hole first came out, came on this hole I saw some spectacular things on that hole and this hole that day, but one, Tommy's was the epic fail. He came in here and he did the dunk and he hit the pole. And when he hit the pole, he got totally unlucky when he hit the flagpole. And instead of it bouncing off like this and then getting sucked back because of all the backspin he had, it hit the flagpole and went straight back and ended up in the sand. <laughs> 
That same day, I saw Zachary Jones come on this, and the only way he could win the tournament was to get an Albi on this hole, and he got an Albi on this hole and won the tournament doing this dunk. So good things and bad things can happen, but every single way that you go into this cup is dangerous. I will tell you, in my personal opinion, the easiest second shot that you'll have on this hole is the one from the rough right here with your Nirvana because it's a pretty straight in shot. The trees really aren't in play. You you may have to kind of work towards this side of the green a little bit more than going for the green, but I find a lot of times when I'm out in this area that I can actually get pretty aggressive to the cup. And I don't mind this rough shot at all. And I've and I've taken it a lot of times and it's one of those things where if you fail in that area, it's not that bad a deal. As long as you have your Nirvana so in my bag, I'm going to bring my Grim Reaper. Grim Reaper. And while I normally am a huge fan of a Spitfire, if I end up in this sand, I had bigger problems than the fact that I, I, I have no idea what it would take for my shot to end up in that sand. So if I end up in the sand up here, I'm close enough to the cup that I can bring any sand wedge. Distance shouldn't be a factor with the size ball. I'm, you know, if I bring a three power ball, I shouldn't have any problems. And on this one, I'm going to bring a power five ball because I'm going to do a different shot that I'll talk about here in a second. So if I'm up in this area, I'm going to bring whatever back spin, whatever club I have in my bag as far as sand wedge, which is going to be what Houdini, Callaway, or is it Cal? Not Callaway. It's whatever the epic, like the second level epic is, as it gets up in level, it has backspin. So I want to bring whatever my backspin club is because you'll have the same exact shot that you're trying to take from out here with your Grim Reaper. I don't think you can get into your wedge range or your short iron range, but in my short iron, I'm going to bring a thorn. So all of the clubs that in my bag for that second shot are going to be backspin clubs, except my Nirvana. Because if you end up in the rough, up in this area, you can make it with any rough iron. But if you're in the rough down here, or you're in the rough here, or in the rough over here, you can't get on <laughs> With the, other, with the other rough irons that are out there because they just don't have that raw distance and the top spin to get you up there. So I have, I have been in trouble several times where I brought all backspin clubs and then I ended up in these roughs and I couldn't get up and that club didn't do me any, you know, that backspin club didn't do me any good because I didn't have the distance. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna hope that I don't end up in the rough. If I end up not in the fairway up here, I'd rather be in the sand than the rough. Now the shot that I'm going to take, and I just started doing this shot the last time we played this in a tournament. I'm going to bring a big topper. Let's let me find my notes here. I got a big topper, and I was using a one side spin ball. I was using a big topper, power five, one side spin ball, max top spin, maximum or whatever. So I had max top spin, and then whatever I could get and left hand side spin, which was like one and a quarter. So I didn't want to do any more left hand side spin where it starts taking away from top spin, put the top spin back on. The top spin's more important. I was two rings into the rough. So I was down in this area over here and I was two, where was I at? Was two rings into the rough and I was, I think, in this area over here, two rings in, took the wind out and did a max overpower hook shot and ended up, I was on, in the video, I was on this trajectory where I came through and I was on this trajectory over here and I ended up down here on the lower edge. If I would have been where I clipped right here and bled through, if I would have went to the right, there was plenty of fairway over here. Like if I could, if I, I probably needed to go in maybe just a little bit more, maybe two and a quarter rings in order to pick up this, this low spot down here to try and get it to run forward. But I'm going to work on that max overpower hook shot. You can watch that playlist for the Ventura open. 
and um, I've got all of these shots that I talked about. And then it's really important to watch my, my opponents because there was a couple of the holes on there, especially hole number one. I think I'm going to do what my opponent did. I've tried a max overpower hook shot on hole number one, but uh, I think what my opponent did was a lot more repeatable. This hole right here, we've got a lot of different ways to play. And I'm going to go out and try and have some fun on this hole because I want to take as as hard as we try to get into this spot to take this shot. I don't end up in that spot very often, but I really want to want to have some fun on this hole. We'll see. We'll see as the week goes on. We'll see how the rest of the game's going, and if it's all going good, you know, I may get on this hole and just like, hey, I just want to get up there and get my uh, my eagle and move on. Looks like we've got. You know, all of these holes are makeable. We've got, there's some of, some of them, there are, are chances of getting like an Albi on this or an Albi on the other par five. We do have, it can be difficult. There's no real give me's, but there's a couple that we need to pick up. We need to pick up several of the par fours. And the mid par four, we absolutely have to pick up. I mean, the mid par four is almost so serious that like, even to like, get you through the round you, you may need to shoot a 13 just to be able to get through you know that might be a lot of people the minimum score you're looking for we really need to always be thinking of minus 15 so where are we going to pick up the other two shots hole number one we standardize hole number one that's a great opportunity even if we get in the perfect spot on this hole um it's not <laughs> A lot of things have to go your way for everything to work out to get an Albi on this hole. But there are some other holes that we can work on. Hole number two is another great opportunity to get a hole in one. Hole number three, that's a great opportunity to get an Albi. We can set this shot up and we work on the black line where we're trying to get in front of the green in one. Well, we're doing that max overpower hook, which isn't on here. But if we're trying to end up down in this zone in one, we have a serious opportunity to make Albi on this hole. What we really want is to get Albi at least once around on this hole. But this is a hole that we can set that shot up so that if we can standardize our drive shot, we could literally be getting an, be putting ourselves in Albi position every time. This is another hole we could pick one up. So there's two shots that we need right there. Just those first, in the first three. That would be critical. If we break it into three hole sets, in the first three holes, we really need to focus on those first three holes. That can set us up for the rest of the round. This hole right here, I think if you do the backspin shot that I talked about, you got a serious shot at hole in one. But the rest of them, in my opinion, other than the white line, and the white line is just scary as hell. Um, and I've seen a lot of people hit, hit hole in ones on the white line, but it is scary. This, we have a shot at it, but I'm never going to think of this hole as a high percentage Albi, but I think we do have it. We do, you do have a serious shot at it, and I've, and I've made a lot of Albies on this hole. I've made a lot of Albies on this hole blind where I had no look at it at all because I was wrapping around the trees. I was using a guardian. I had no ball guide. I had no nothing. And you're just taking the shot blind. And so you've taken it so many times, you just know how to do it. But if you take a big enough ball and you bring a sniper out there where you can really walk your ball guide down to the cup, I think we might have a really good shot of being able to uh, get an Albie this week on this. We've got to get this hole. We just have to. This is another hole right here that we have a serious opportunity for hole in one, but you've got to take a little teeny risk going for hole in one because you're so close to that edge. But I like my chances to get hole in one on this hole this week. And this hole right here, I'm really, really strongly thinking that I'm going to quit playing it like I normally do in tournaments, and I'm just going to go out there and play like one on one and get my birdie <laughs> and win my chest because they got a par. And move on to the next hole. Yeah, so we do have some opportunities. And those opportunities that really are, we've got more opportunities at the beginning of the round. And then when we get to the par three, so we really have to start off strong in this tournament. Um, I would be thinking, you know, our minimum score is minus 12. We want to have in our mind that it's minus 13 because we have to pick up that one par four. And then to put ourselves in position for anything, we're going to have to pick up a couple of shots and they're there. And it's not there. I mean, I think, I think we have a really good shot this week. All right. That was the uh, Santa Ventura course for the Silicon Valley nine hole cup. 
Thanks for watching. Everybody have a great turnout. I'll shoot a practice round. I'll practice on Thursday. I'll, um, what is today? Today's Tuesday. Maybe I should shoot a practice round tomorrow and post it up. I'll practice it so we can take a look at it. All right. All right. You talked me into it. I'll shoot a practice round tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Yeah. <laughs>